In this episode, I'm going to make a very easy, very simple piece of scattered terrain for a new game called Frostgrave Ghost Archipelago. Hey everybody, DM Jim here, and welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. This week I've got a very short video. Uh, I've been quite busy with real work this week, so I haven't had time to go too deep into projects. But I did want to put something on the map for you guys. This is going to be for a small niche audience. There is a game out there, a war game called Frostgrave. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you've heard me talk about it a lot. Uh, there is a new game coming out, a spinoff, called Frostgrave Ghost Archipelago. This book comes out, I believe, towards the end of no, uh, October of 2017, and it's basically, you know, a, it's a spinoff of Frostgrave, but it has an island setting, sort of a tropical or jungle type environment that you will be playing on. And so, you know, I've been pondering uh, what kind of terrain my opponent and I would want to throw on the tabletop when playing a game like this. And um, so I've got some ideas. Some of them are going to be a little bit more involved, but I wanted to I wanted to do something quick, something that I could get a video out, you know, fast for you guys. And uh, I wanted to talk about something. The artwork in this book is by a husband and wife team named Dimitri and Kate Burmack. I hope I'm getting that name correct. They also did the artwork, or Dimitri did the artwork for the first book, the uh, Frostgrave game and its expansions. But the artwork in here is just incredible. Um, some of this stuff, I don't know if you can see the cover, it's just really, really nice artwork. I, I would love to have some of this hanging on my walls. But, you know, throughout the book, if, if you're flipping through the book, there's all kinds of examples of terrain uh, that they've used to shoot, you know, photographs. You know, here's, here's skeletons attacking a boat, things like that. And so there's a lot of inspiration in this book. And I was skimming through it, and I was trying to find something that I could throw together real fast with some of the supplies I have, and I found it. Um, on page 77, there's a two-page spread of a, a woman jumping, she's stealing an idol, it looks like, and she's got some natives running uh, running after her. But if you look real carefully right here, you'll see this tripod of heads, like a headhunter tribe, or maybe a bunch of uh, cannibals, I'm not sure. But it was a really interesting little piece of terrain there, or you know, this would be like scatter terrain for the game. So I thought, let me try to recreate that. So what I did was I have some oversized skeleton figures that I bought at the dollar store. And in the next section of this, uh, of this episode, I'm going to show you how I took those and some other really inexpensive supplies and recreated that little tripod of heads with hair. So what I've got is I have these, uh, I bought these at the dollar store. Um, there were 10, 10 for a dollar, 10 for three dollars. I can't remember. It was, I think it was a just a couple bucks, and you got ten of these. They're they're oversized. They're just a little too big for the tabletop, unless you want to call them giant skeletons. Forgive me for doing this. I know some of you are probably going to shudder, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to <laughs> cut these heads off, and these are going to be what I use to recreate this little tripod of heads. So I'll go ahead and cut these off. And maybe I can repurpose these skeleton bodies uh, for something. Set those aside. And so the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out how I'm going to glue some hair on these skeletons. And what it occurred to me was, you know, I can't use hot glue, uh, the, stringy from, the string from hot glue. I'd have to paint it somehow, and I don't think that would work. I found this black thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run out a really long piece of it. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to double, double back, double it back on itself over and over again. So I don't, you know, I may need to put a piece of white paper down here so you can actually see this. But uh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold the string in half, the thread in half. And then I'm going to fold it in half again. It's not so easy. And I'm going to do it again. And basically I'm just doing it until it's down to about maybe a inch and a half to two inches. This little coil. You see that? A little coil of thread. And I may, I may find that I need more. 
So I'm going to take another piece of thread right here, and I'm going to tie it. Let's see if you can see this. I'm going to take this bundle of thread, and I'm going to lay it in the center of, of this piece of thread, and I'm just going to tie it up. I am not good at dealing with thread. All right, now let me pull this through a little bit. Tighten it down. All right, there we go. All right, so I did it. I'm going to double knot it just to make sure it stays put. Just like that. All right, now what I can do is I'm going to bundle. I'm going to pull the thread tight, and I'm going to cut it on one side, flip it over, cut it on the other side. Basically, I'm just cutting the ends off so that they're free. And what I've got here is this little, yeah, not close. I'll have to figure out how to make it a little, it's a little um, stiff right now. Not a big deal. There you go. Little, little bit of hair. And I may find, again, that I need to add more. But the idea is that I'm going to glue this on the skull. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need more. So I'll glue it on the skull and I'll find a way. Ah! find a way to um, to make the hair go down and stick to the sides of the skull. Where's the front? There it is. So, so look at that. <laughs> That's gonna look cool. All right, so let me warm up the uh, let me warm up the glue gun and get this thing going. All right, I took two little tufts that I made and hot glued it to the top of the the skull, which looks like crazy hair. And now I'm going to put a little drop of glue and tack down the hair on the side of the skull. Got to be careful here. I don't want to put too much glue. All right, there's one. And then uh, the hair looks a little, I can sort of trim it a little bit to make sure it's all sort of the same length. There's one skull and hair done. I'll do three of these and then I'll get started on the tripod. All right, three skeleton heads with hair. I made them all different length. And there you go. And then here's the one with the really long hair right there. There you go, three skeleton heads. Now I've got to figure out how to make the tripod and then glue the heads in, and that little project will be done. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut three of these um, dowels, roughly the same length. I may have to play around with the size here, but I'm, I'm just sort of eyeballing this. Try to see. Now, these three need to make a tripod, sort of like this. So I'm gonna hot glue them first, and then I'll wrap it with some sort of string to give it a, a rope look.
And that's it. That's the headhunter totem or maybe a cannibal totem. I'm not sure what we'll call this one. But uh, I do apologize for the short project this week. I just got slammed with real work and I just didn't have time to come up with a very you know substantial project. But hopefully next week I'll be back with something a little bigger, a little more involved. But again, throw that down on your tabletop and hopefully that'll put the fear into some players and make them a little more aware of their surroundings. It should work great with Ghost Archipelago or with the new Tomb of, Tomb of Annihilation jungle theme. So anyway, this is GM Jim. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode.